Hey everyone, it's me Hunter, and I'm coming back at you with a new LEGO steam engine review. This time we have Stevenson's Rocket, the legendary locomotive that set the kind of general basis of all the steam engines in Europe, or steam locomotives in Europe. Um, feel free down in the comments to correct me if I'm a little wrong there, or add in more detail. I just did some quick research before, and I only, I only know, you know, very rough history of the locomotive. I just know it's a famous locomotive. It's a great looking locomotive in all honesty. Um, and I wanted to build it after I saw a replica of it in a museum in my state. This model I kind of took the design or took the approach that I took with my other steam locomotives trying to fit them into a Lego set scale while still adding in detail and keeping it um, you know minifigure scale. In my head there's minifigure scale where you know you build these big sets or these big you know, custom projects where it is one-to-one -one minifigure, you know, to transport minifigure to, you know, locomotive. Or I build in set scale, which is like, okay, so if LEGO were to make this a set, how would it roughly be scale? And I try to blend the two, and this is what I came up with for my Stevenson's Rocket. The part that took me the longest to put together, um or that I think I had to kind of mess with more is the front here, just getting the spacing right. Spacing and okay, if I put this here, this brick won't connect to this brick because this is in the way. Though it's not that complicated of a design down here up front by the front where the funnel connects. Um, just making sure it looks accurate. And with the parts I had on hand, I just had a little bit more finagling with it than I thought I would. Now, as we kind of continue back on the locomotive, the boiler is built using a design Lego uses in a modular building. Their old detective's office said they have a water tower on top of one of the buildings. I went back through the instructions and kind of just saw generally how they did it, and I modified it to work for me. I added in, sorry, I added in a 1x4 plate up top to get some of that brass, the whistle, a little dome, I believe it is. Um, and... I just like it. It's very simple, but it gets the point across. Um, I'll go ahead and move it now because I'm sure a lot of people are wondering. Oop. Yeah, let me move it from back here. You can see the uh, pistons moving. Um, my biggest complaint, and that's just a general thing you have to do with Lego about that movement, is that these parts have to spin. They got to give a little. Um, and maybe in the real model they did pivot a little bit, and I just don't know that, um, which is a possibility. But that's my kind of nitpicky complaint my big complaint my kind of i dropped the ball on it is the tender um anyone who knows the model knows that there's you know you got your wood kind of paneling and support on the inside that's how i'm going to describe it and they got wooden detail wooden plank wooden board detailing on the outside where you got another two boards at least that come down and another board along the bottom for right now um this is the kind of design this is the model I went with just with the parts I had on hand and after doing some looking around it got to a point where though I wasn't actively building this model every time I came back to it this was the one thing that was holding me up so I went with a design that I thought looked clean and close to accurate even if it's not 100% accurate that being said that doesn't mean down the road um you know in a couple months I'm going to sit down and really go to town really go to work on making that this tender more accurate all my steam locomotives I've come back to at one point or another. Even uh, the few diesels I've built I've came back to, um, or I've gone back to. And it's, you know, always an editing process, I think, with these builds. Very rarely, I think, do you build anything right, even on your first uh, try or your first, hey, this is it, this is my final product. I think people always go back and modify. So this is one that I am going to come back and probably look at in the future. But I think for right now, it's at a level where I can show everybody and it's great. Uh, I know, I think there's a large-scale Lego idea set of this exact locomotive. So I would go check that out. Um, definitely vote for it uh, if you're a Steam Locomotive fan or if you're a Lego fan in general. I think it's, I think it's got some very nice uh, features to it. I think it looks good. The um, the creator of that project is not endorsing me in any way, not uh, asking me in any way. I just know it's out there, and I think it looks great. And it'd be really cool to get a you know a classic or the classic steam locomotive in Lego, even if it is a larger, beefed up model scale. Though personally, I would rather have it in more of a set scale like this. On this end, you can see some levers. 
just a couple in there to add, you know, the hint of controls. I didn't want to go crazy. I didn't need to go crazy personally. Um, another thing I might add on in, in a little bit is I would probably put maybe like a shovel back here and some coal detailing. You'll notice on all my tenders except for this one, I do have some coal kind of built up. The way this was designed, I just felt it wasn't necessary to put coal in, uh, at least at this time, mainly because I want to save those for... I've, I've actually put a big dent in my uh, black studs um, between all the, with all the locomotives I've been building. And especially the big tender engines. I have another big tender engine coming if you follow me on Instagram. Or if you have watched my Building Wellsworth videos, you've seen that locomotive um, sitting there kind of on the uh, mock as I've been building it and building the mock around it. So I didn't add any coal in on this build, but I think that's fine. Last thing I kind of want to talk about is the water barrel. Water barrel uses the same design as the boiler, taking that modified design from the Lego water tower in the Lego detective's office modular building. I'm going to go ahead and show you it, do my best to show you it from the back. I know when I'm working with this track you kind of get limited options. Again, the back's a little different, but it gives off that plank look, that board look, and that's what I wanted to get the boards, the plank, the old classic, you know, everything built in wood style, and I think it does that very well. Arguments can be made for lack of detailing or maybe a little lack of accuracy, but I think it looks great. We'll go ahead and turn it around one more time so we can look at the front. Boop. So a head-on view. I think, again, it looks nice. It captures the essence of the model without being too detailed. Because um, this is a playable model. I can play with it. Um, though it is one of the more delicate playable models, you could definitely play with this model. And I would say it would hold up. Um, maybe not being dropped, but, you know, to push it around the track or to put a motorized tender on or tender or car behind it and push it, it'll do just fine. Very happy with this model. So, that's pretty much it for my Stevenson's Rocket. I want to thank you all for watching. Please uh, comment down below if you have any thoughts ideas if you know or have time to write up the real story i might try to add a little bit in the description of this video um go ahead and leave it down there because i know as usual i don't do as much research as i should before the video i've done research kind of outside as i'm building the sets but i never like okay let me sit down and get a couple facts before the video i never remember to do that again i want to thank you all for watching please hit the like button if you liked this video hit the dislike button if you didn't like this video <laughs> always lets me know what people think uh, helps me kind of target my videos and my priorities, but as always, I will see you in my next video.